Hey YouTube, try to keep this one under 10 minutes. I recently did a video on three essential electrician's tools for the house uh, for homeowner do-it-yourself repair electrical work and one of the items that I had uh, featured was the multimeter in particular this Fluke 117 and I had several people ask me if I would do a review on this particular type of multimeter. I don't know that I can add anything to what's already been said on other YouTube videos, but I'll give it a shot. I can only tell you about my use with it. I'm not uh, a multimeter expert. I'm not an electrician. I'm simply a homeowner who has to do his own work on his own home because I really can't afford to hire an electrician. So essentially this is what I bought to do all the diagnostic or the majority of the diagnostic work and the checking on my home. It is a Fluke 117. It is uh, meant to be held in the hand because it's very comfortable in the hand. Uh, the other Fluke models are rather big and bulky. However, the 114 model, the 115, 116, and 117 all seem to have the same uh, dimensions in that I think they were meant for field work or to be held in the hand and used where the other ones I think are more desktop oriented. Uh, because of their size and their features as well. However, uh, this one features uh, things that an electrician would likely use. One of the things is, if you can see at the bottom it says volt alert. Well, if you have a non-contact uh, volt meter or volt tester, it's the same thing. I'll have to move, move this camera so I'll give you a demonstration. You can see how sensitive it can be under the high setting that's beeping is shown is indicating that there is some power as it gets closer to the receptacle it shows you that there is some uh, power running through that now if I hit the range to the low it has a, a range button on the, on the meter that gives you high and low uh, the low setting is not so sensitive so if you wanted to test a particular outlet or if you needed to get close to some wires uh, without it going off uh, too far away so that you can identify the wires that you're trying to test for the receptacle it'll allow you to get closer right up to oh, about an inch which is about where some of your sensitive non-contact voltage testers uh, end up the uh, non-contact voltage tester that I have it's also by fluke and it is uh, not very sensitive which is good because it enables me to get right up to probe an outlet uh, receptacle that is or uh, a, sw a switch or anything to see if there's power running through it so that's one of the features that I think this has that makes it uh, very useful for the household uh, the others would be um, this auto V function that uh, you can see there it kind of uh, identifies automatically if you're going to use this in an application where uh, you were going to use the probes for DC and AC current so um, you can see in this meter that this is set on the auto V function and if I go through I can't hold the camera and do this all at once but if I uh, put these probes in the in the outlet and you see the reading that I have it automatically recognized uh, AC voltage and it gave me a proper reading now keeping in the same in the same setting in the auto V setting put this camera down. I'm just kind of tilting it on on a stand so hopefully it won't fall off but if I do this again in the same auto auto uh, V function you could see that it gave me 1.3 DC voltage hope you're able to see that and this is a 1.3 volt triple a battery so it differentiates automatically between uh, AC and DC 
and that's a nice handy feature as well otherwise you you simply move this over to the uh, AC setting which is the V with a wavy line above it DC setting is the V with the uh, dotted and straight line above it and then you have the millivolts I don't use that setting uh, the upside down horseshoe is the resistance setting that will give you that will give you a, a, if you need to check resistance between let's say this is a running through your household it's a long wire and you want to see if there's resistance running through it what it is and and it'll give you a uh, a reading of the sort of resistance that's running through that and uh, that way if there's too much resistance you know that it could be in the line or for what a number of other reasons but that's just one of the other functions that I use this for uh, the it also can be used in the continuity for the same purpose but simply the continuity would be looking at point A point B and wanting to see that there's not a broken line the audible signal tells you there's not a broken line if it was broken it wouldn't have any audible noise and then you can tell from that and then make your diagnostics accordingly uh, the other functions that this particular meter has has a diode setting I don't use that that's more for electronics use uh, then the amp settings here I don't use at all this requires that the lead probe be placed into this jack here which allows it for it to be fused this is a 10 amp fuse and uh, some of the other multimeters go to uh, milliamps uh, same principle you move the jack from this setting which is your common I'm sorry your common is going to be your black but your the normal red probe is going to be in your volts resistance and continuity jack otherwise it's amps be in the other jack or the milli jack milli uh, amp jack but like I said, I don't use that for the home. And problem with using this jack is, just so you know, the reason why you have to switch the jack is because you have to run the current through your multimeter, and that's what enables you to get a readout for the amperage. Um, I don't use that, and I don't find an application for that as of yet. If I do, I would use a clamp amp um, uh, meter. And that enables a magnetic field to be uh, used to determine the, a readout. It's much safer and it doesn't run through the machine or the multimeter. It just runs through a, mag a magnetic field on a uh, literally a clamp that opens and closes around a wire. But it has to be used around a single wire. It can't be used around multiple lines. And uh, the way that this works is you can't touch uh, one end of of a wire that's connected to others uh, in other words you have to break the circuit and put this in between it in order to accurately get a readout and that's just not an application that I think is that I've come across around the house so in any event um, this is a very good uh, multimeter and it's got a lot of functions that I can use around the house I don't see any reason that I'll ever need another multimeter uh, it's got a nice durable case on the exterior. Uh, it's got a clear screen with the uh, with the light backlight that I've shown. Uh, the probes that it comes with, they're not these. These are aftermarket silicone probes that are still by Fluke. Uh, but the the other ones that come with it are are fine, except they are of uh, non silicone wire. They're just a uh, plastic coated wire but they're very good I opted for these because they have a little more wear resistance on the ends of the probes and then they have this cat uh, rating ability to close up the sleeve so you don't have much of the, of the uh, probe metal sh uh, exposed that can cause a problem if you're in outlets or other connecting points if you short it out could cause a problem and this is nice and handy in that it allows for us to be rolled back to take on something like a clamp which uh, slides over and these particular ones screw on but uh, 
you get the idea as far as uh, what the sleeves are for. And while I have these here, I'll show you another thing that I do with with the meter. And it's primarily for checking things like switches. If you're not familiar with the single, this is a basic single pole, single throw type switch. And what I'll do is I'll clamp my leads onto the two gold screws. I'll set my meter to uh, either resistance or uh, I can set it to, uh, in this case, continuity setting. Shows It will show me the same thing uh, in that I have a, a closed circuit and the continuity beep tells me that I've opened the circuit properly and it's showing a, a continuous read and I can close that circuit. So the switch is operating appropriately and it is a good switch. This is good if you're having to test out some things like sw old switches and uh, new switches if you need to replace them. <clears throat> this is another type of a switch, same principle, single pole, single throw. And uh, you can put this on a resistance setting and it'll show you the same thing where it's uh, closed and then open, open, close, that type of thing. Where this switch is good as well. These uh, screws, I just put them on there for ease of use, but they typically would be gold screws. Um, but you get the idea. But it's nice to be able to test very quickly things like that around the house. So it's just a di another way of diagnosing what's wrong with a particular problem. Uh, the other features that I would say that this has as far as uh, multimeters go it is a bit pricey at 160 or 170 dollars, but I think the Fluke has a really good warranty. If anything goes wrong with them, you can send them back and they'll cover them for you, cover the problems. But they're very, very durable. They're very reliable, and I think they're among the best type of multimeters out there. So certainly you can pick up multimeters for 25 to 50 dollars that are very, very good and have all the functions of this meter and then some. Uh, but I just chose to do uh, go with the Fluke because it's uh, well established in the company. They are very, very highly rated if you go online to check them. And I haven't found many, many people with any problems with them that they weren't able to address with the company uh, solving the problem for them or other folks because of the popularity of Flukes in general taking care of it and assisting them with that. But I think uh, the meters are great. Uh, I think the company is great in terms of they stand behind their product. And overall, I think one meter for me is all I'm ever going to need. And this is going to be it. So uh, it's a small investment. Like I said, I can't afford to hire an electrician. The $160 or $170, it wouldn't even cover one day with an electrician at my home. So that's the way I look at it. If I'm going to have to do all the work myself, I'm going to put in the money to get some decent equipment and this just happens to be one of them hopefully this was helpful to you and if you have any questions please uh send them out thanks